Fresh from the hunt with more news for your ear holes. This is the update for August 24th, 2014. Update required. The popular Minecraft mod Bucket has finally been kicked as it's been announced that development for it will cease. Or will it? Longtime developer Ward Lowe announced that the mod will no longer be updated due to changes in Minecraft's ULA, as well as a lack of support from Minecraft developer Mojang. But then something strange happened. Mojang themselves stepped in saying that the mod wasn't actually his to end. Bucket, a mod designed to make creating and updating Minecraft servers easier and better than the game's default system, has been in development since 2011. Seemingly unknown to anyone not involved, Mojang had acquired ownership of the mod in 2012, when they had hired Lowe to work on developing a superior official server API and management tool that would eventually take over for the mod. The deal also involved continuation of the mod's development until the official server API was finished and implemented into the game. Lowe had left Mojang in 2013, but still took part in the mod's development until now. Nathan Adams, who was part of the Bucket team and still works for Mojang, tweeted that he will now be taking over the project, but that Bucket is and never will be a official API for Minecraft, although there is no word on when the actual official API will ever be finished. Lowe also tweeted that he is all for Mojang stepping in and taking over the mod's development. I do find it a bit strange to hear that a game developer is developing a mod for their own game but it has happened a few times in the past to the point of creating fully new titles. Castle Crashers and Battleblock Theater developer The Behemoth has announced that they are working on a new title. Nothing has really been revealed about the project as of yet, but a teaser for the game has been posted on the Behemoth's website. Known only as Game 4 at the moment, the teaser portrays the same kind of strangeness and humor the Behemoth has become known for. The only information released at this moment about the title is in the description of the video on the Behemoth's YouTube channel. The description goes on to talk about how they came up with the game's prototype shortly before Battleblock's release, and that there may be a hint in the video as to what genre the game will be in. Rumors have already spread about what the genre of the game might be, and many have guessed that it could be a survival game based on what was shown off in the trailer. The survival genre has become very popular over the past few years with the rise of games like Minecraft and DayZ, inspiring many other games such as Rust, The Stomping Lands, and Don't Starve, among many others. Looking at all three of the Behemoth's games so far, such as Alien Hominid, Castle Crashers, and Battle Block Theater, it would be interesting to see what they could bring to the survival genre, if indeed that is what Game 4 turns out to be. The teaser seems to be on par time-wise with their previous titles, such as Battle Block Theater's teaser that was shown off in 2009, around eight months after the release of Castle Crashers, but there is no information yet as to when more details on Game 4 will actually be released. The Behemoth aren't the only indie devs surprising their audiences with new titles. Super Meat Boy developer Team Meat has released a teaser trailer of an upcoming live-action stealth game called A Voyeur for September. While Team Meat co-developer Edmund McMillan is known for his own experimental projects, Team Meat themselves have already been working on a very different kind of game called Mugenics. In Mugenics, players would be able to play it around with the genes of virtual cats with millions of combinations to discover. It seems, however, that Mugenics has been put on hold for the moment until A Voyeur for September is actually finished and released. Nothing is really known about Team Meat's new project, and it's said that more will be shown off at this year's PAX Prime Expo on August 29th. But, of course, with that lack of knowledge has come the inevitable rumors, and the big one this time is that Voyeur is a complete ruse. Team Meat fans have figured out that a Voyeur for September is an anagram for Super Meat Boy Forever, and recall that a planned version of Super Meat Boy was put on hold back in 2012. 
no one but Team Meat knows what's really going on at the moment, but it does make for some interesting thoughts. Live action had become very popular in gaming in the early 90s with games like Night Trap and The Seventh Guest, but as 3D technology advanced, live action was almost completely abandoned. A recent use of live action in gaming was the latest Tex Murphy adventure game called Tesla Effect. It could be a very risky direction for Team Meat to be going if Voyeur is a real game, since Super Meat Boy in itself was very much a traditional platform game. But we'll have to wait and see how things play out. Atari has announced that they plan on bringing back some old classics with reboots of both Alone in the Dark and Haunted House. Both games are considered pioneers of the survival horror genre, and even though both reboots are set to release in late 2014, not much is known about either project. The last anyone had heard of either of these two names was in 2008 with a reboot of Alone in the Dark, which was released to very mixed reviews. Even the reworked version, Alone in the Dark Inferno, was unable to gather much praise from critics. This new reboot version, titled Alone in the Dark Illumination, is currently under development by Pure FPS, while the new Haunted House is being made by Anna developer Dream Painters. Anna was released in 2013 to mixed reviews in itself, and Pure FPS has a address, but they don't even seem to have a website of any kind. Survival horror and even horror games in general have become rather popular in the past few years, with titles such as Outlast and the Amnesia series. This news isn't quite as unexpected as you might think, since last week Atari did release that they are working on a new Roller Coaster Tycoon game called Roller Coaster Tycoon World. So it kind of makes sense to see Atari trying to bring these two classics back as well. Keeping our theme of horror and newly announced games, Payday developer Overkill has announced that they are working on a new game set in the world of The Walking Dead. The Walking Dead has already branched out into video games three times in the past, with two highly praised point-and-click adventure games developed by Telltale, and one not-so-highly-praised FPS developed by Activision that was based off of The Walking Dead television show. While Overkill's new game will be FPS as well, in an attempt to not repeat the same failures of Activision, it has been revealed that the new game will take place in the universe of the original Walking Dead comic books and that they are actually working with The Walking Dead creator Robert Kirkman. Producer Almir Listo addressed some questions about the project on Reddit, stating, Overkill's The Walking Dead is a co-op first-person shooter with elements of action, role-playing, survival horror, and stealth that invites players to explore the hugely popular The Walking Dead universe, where they will play the role of survivors fending for themselves in a post-apocalyptic world dominated by flesh-eating walkers. Overkill's previous games, Payday the Heist and Payday 2, were also both co-op first-person shooters, with elements of action, role-playing, and stealth. So it'll be interesting to see just how similar to the Payday series this new game will be, and just what Overkill would decide to do with the license. Listo also states that their previously announced title, Storm, a co-op science fiction first-person shooter that has been described as Payday in Space, is still in the works and that more information will be made available in the future. And now we enter the glitch zone.
This week's featured channel is Ginger Dragon, offering first impressions of recently released and in development titles as well as game playthroughs. Ginger Dragon has a wide selection of entertaining videos in his catalog. That's all I got for you guys for now, but before I go, I thought I'd let you know about the latest Jumpstart developer interview. I got the chance to talk to Bryce Co of Guts Department about their Kickstarter for Aegis Defenders, a interesting mix of 2D platform exploration and tower defense. Thanks everybody for watching this week. If you enjoyed the show, please do leave a like. That's that's the only way that I'll know. I'm Mega Pie Man, and you've just been updated. Update complete.